Hey, what's up? Welcome to Andre Knows Everything. This is the show where I, Andre Morton, uh, take you on a wild ride through the internet to learn about a new and interesting topic. Um, Or at least as much we can learn about it in about an hour. Or maybe less. I might do less today. We'll see. We'll see. Today, we are talking about an insect. uh, The bee. Bees. Buzzing in the trees uh i wanted to talk about bees because my wife has started a quarantine garden you know with her her newfound free time she has started planting um all kinds of veggies and flowers and and plants in our backyard uh and because of that and her uh, wanting the fruit to grow as much as possible uh we we started learning a little bit about pollination just a little bit uh, really not enough uh we, we tried to self-pollinate the plants because uh, we, the bees couldn't see the flowers in the plants, and so we had to go out there with Q-tips and, and uh, make these plants have sex with each other. It was, it was really weird, uh, but super hot. And, um, and once, we, once we learned about doing that, then we were able to remove some of the, the bigger leaves from the plants and expose more of the flowers to the open air so that the bees could see them and come in and pollinate themselves. So I wanted to learn a little bit more about bees because uh, they play an important role in our ecosystem here on the planet Earth. So let's um, let's get into it. Let's check out the Wikipedia article for the bee. Bees are flying insects closely related to wasps and ants, known for their role in pollination and, in the case of the best-known bee species, the western honeybee, for producing honey. Mmm, yummy. Bees are monophyletic li- are are a monophyletic lineage within the superfamily Apoidea. Huh? They are presently considered a clade called Anthophila. There are over sixteen thousand known species of bees in seven recognized biological families. Some species, including honeybees, bumblebees, and stingless bees, what what are these? Uh, live socially in colonies, while some species, including mason bees, car- carpenter bees, leafcutter bees, and sweat bees, are solitary. Now, hold up. I didn't know that there was a stingless bees. Okay? This is new information for me. wasn't aware that there were stingless bees. Let's take a look at this bad boy. Can I tell physically that it doesn't have a stinger? Because that's kind of a big thing about bees is that uh, they sting you. Or they they can sting, and maybe I'll maybe I'll read a little bit more about that uh, here on the website. But but uh, I've I've been scared of being stung by bees for basically my entire life since I was a very very small child. It's it's I think that's put in you pretty pretty quick that bees be stinging, um, and you know you the 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 thought behind it is that the bees they're very protective of their their hive and their honey. Uh, so they will sting attackers, but turns out if they sting you, they also die. It's like a, a seppuku, you know, is a sword right to the heart once uh, once they put their stinger in you. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, so I didn't realize that there were bees that that didn't have uh didn't have stingers. Stingless bees, sometimes called stingless honeybees, or simply meloponines that is not simply what do you mean simply meloponines i can barely sp- sp- uh, pronounce that word are a large group of bees uh, comprising the tribe meloponini okay they belong to the family apidae and are closely related to common honeybees um, and other types of bumblebees meloponines have stingers but they are highly reduced and cannot be used for defense though these bees exhibit other defensive behaviors and mechanisms meloponines did i say Meliponines, yeah, Meliponines, Meliponines. <sighs> Why am I doing bugs? This is stupid. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> these ones are not the type of, not the only type of stingless bee. All male bees and many female bees of several other families, such as Adrenidae, also cannot sting. What? Male bees can't sting? All right, I gotta. Okay. <laughs> Don't judge me, but I brought up a uh, bees for kids pet pestworldforkids.org website. Um, in addition to my, my wife having a garden and me seeing a couple more bees around my own place, I also hung out with uh, a family member, a family member like a, a baby cousin, a, a, a kid who's like four years old, 
and he was just all about collecting bugs. He wanted to know uh, everything about bugs. And when we showed up to the place, uh, they he was he had already gotten a grasshopper and several spiders. Uh, he had a lot of spiders in his in his little uh, bug catching bug catching thing. Um, so it's very funny to me that there are uh, these bug websites specifically for kids. But I figure that uh, if they can explain it well enough so that kids understand it, then uh, this guy over here can understand it as well. So let's let, let's just see what some of the facts are about bees for kids. <clears throat> Beekeepers use smoke to calm bees when they are collecting honey or relocating a hive. Smoke. So they just get all jacked up. <laughs> They're like, oh, okay, I can't stay nothing right now, dude. That smoke got me fucked up. Um, bees make honey to feed their young, and so they have something to eat during the winter. Oh, so they eat the honey. They make the honey, they eat the honey. Killer bees have been known to chase people for over a quarter of a mile once they get excited and aggressive. Okay, when I was a kid, <laughs> one time I was outside, I was playing with Scooter. Uh, scooter was the hotness back in the day, okay? And I had my scooter, and I was riding forward, forward motion of riding the scooter, and when I looked down, there was a bee right here on my chest. And instead of stopping and, like, shaking it off or brushing it or <laughs> blowing on it or anything like that, I just kind of freaked out and went as fast as humanly possible on the scooter in a forward motion so that the bee was just pinned to my chest. And I did that for about... I think I went around the block twice <laughs> on my scooter, just pell-mell, full tilt, as fast as I could possibly go with my, like, nine-year-old body. <laughs> bee! And I didn't look down again until after that second block, but when I looked down again, the bee was gone. But it was one of the scariest moments of my entire life. That's when that bee was on my shirt. <laughs> I didn't get stung at all. I <laughs> looked down, saw a bee. It probably flew off of me as soon as I took off, but I was gone, man. It was like a like a Wile E. Coyote cartoon. You know, I was out of there. Um, <coughs> so if if a bat killer bee had been behind me, you know, I I might have I ran him. I think I went half a mile, and it can only go a quarter of a mile. Um, certain species of bees die after stinging because their stingers, which are attached to their abdomen have little barbs or hooks on them. When this type of bee tries to fly away after stinging something, part of the abdomen is ripped away. Whoa, that's nuts. Why did you evolve like that? <laughs> Cer only certain species of bees die after stinging. Hmm, because it's attached to your abdomen. Imagine if you went to kick somebody, and then after you connected that kick, your leg just fell off. <laughs> oh. There are about 20,000 different species of bees in the world. Bees live in colonies that contain the queen bee, the worker bee, and the drone. The worker bee and the queen and the queen bee are both female, but only the queen bee can reproduce. All drones are male. <laughs> Y'all have a very specific purpose. Don't be stepping out of your station. Um Worker bees clean the hive, collecting pollen and nectar to feed the colony, and they take care of the offspring. The drone's only job is to mate with the queen. Oh, the queen's only job is to lay eggs. Hmm. I wonder who considers that the sweeter deal, you know? I'm guessing it's the drones. Go in there, dude, did you get the queen today? Yeah, dude, three times. Three times? Yeah, man, the line was short. I don't understand why. Maybe maybe we had a stinging attack that I didn't know about, but I kept getting in that back in that line, and I kept hitting it. I probably laid like, or she probably laid like, you know, 40, 50 eggs today. I'm doing good. I'm on a roll. And they high antenna each other. Um, bees store their venom in a sack attached to their stinger, and only female bees sting. That is because the stinger, called an op ovipositor, an ovipositor, is part of the female bee's reproductive design. A queen bee uses her ovipositor to lay eggs as well as sting. Sterile females, also called worker bees, don't lay eggs. They just use ovipositors to sting. Ah, that's so weird, sterile, fe sterile females. Bees see all colors except the color red. 
that and their sense of smell help them find the flowers they need to collect pollen. Not only is pollen a food source for bees, but also some of the pollen is dropped in flight, resulting in cross-pollination. The relationship between the plant and the insect is called symbiosis. A bee is a symbiote for plants, and plants are a symbiote for bees. Flowers. No, plants. Plants. Plants in general. That's very interesting. Hmm. The other day, I was outside my backyard, and I saw a bee that had so much pollen on his legs that it wasn't flying straight. It was like... It was, it was all over the place. It was too heavy. It was carrying too much, too much weight. I had to drop some before it went on. Um, so that was all for... Oh, just honeybees? Oh, and then there's different types of bees, and they're different um, uses and effects and, and whatnot. Um, okay, so... I also know, um, basically from watching the uh, the B movie <laughs> by Jerry Seinfeld, which I think I pulled up here just to show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this treasure trove of a movie. Look at this guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but in that movie, uh, Jerry Seinfeld he plays a bee, and it's a lot of like fun little kid bee stuff. But then, like during like the second or third act, they start getting into the heavy. Um, ecological side effects of like us killing bees and how if bees go extinct then the pollination process is uh gonna fail and our plants won't grow and you know we'll die <laughs> because we can't grow food and stuff like that and i was like whoa this is kind of heavy for a 2007 animated comedy you know but i, I didn't know about it before um so let's kind of get into that i kind of want to know why bees are important and exactly what they do for our ecological systems. <clears throat> so am I going to read this whole thing? <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, I am. All right, here we go. This is from sustainweb.org. Uh, Sustain is the Alliance for Better Food and Farming. And this article, I don't know when this article was written. That's okay. Why bees are important. Globally, there are more honeybees than other types of bee and pollinating insects, so it is the world's most important pollinator of food crops. It is estimated that one-third of the food that we consume each day relies on pollination mainly by bees, but also by other insects, birds, and bats. Oh, a bat pollinator. Um, many domestic and imported fruits and vegetables require pollination. Examples include avocados, soybeans, asparagus, broccoli, celery, squash. That's what me and my wife are growing outside. And sunflowers for oils, cucumbers, or also growing that, citrus, fruit, uh, peaches, kiwis, cherries, cranberries, and melons. For crops such as blueberries and almonds, the honeybee plays an essential role in pollination of commercial crops, with around 80% of the U.S. crop said to be dependent on honeybees. Honeybees can also pollinate the clover and alfalfa, which are fed to cattle, so they are implications for the meat and dairy industry, too. And that is not to mention the huge range of manufactured food products made from all of these ingredients. Hmm. Very interesting. So so if we don't have bees at all, then none of this stuff will, will grow, or at least it's not going to grow like it grows now, at the rate that it grows now, because there will be, what, like 80% less pollinators uh natural naturally pollinating the uh the plants without any extra work i mean if if, if bees uh, go extinct which which they might do and I'll, I'll look that up later as well then uh we're gonna have to start get getting to work on like robo pollinators these tiny little mini uh buzz drones that can uh that can pollinate our plants for us because i mean up until now from the beginning of time until now i guess uh, the bees have been doing all the work for free, you know, and they're making honey, and we're taking that too, you know. We're we're uh, we're really uh, 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 giving the bees the short the short straw here, um, and we're killing them, so that's that's no good. But I'll I'll get into that a little bit in a little bit. Let's see what else to say. <coughs> in addition. Honeybees play a significant role in the pollination of other important crops such as cotton and flax, and there are also a number of valuable non-food products produced by the honeybee, such as beeswax used in cleaning and beauty products. That's right. Bees in the economy. 
care about this. In 2008, the British Beekeepers Association estimated that honeybees make a significant contribution to the 165 million euros annually generated for the UK economy through pollination by insects, with the figure put at 200 million euros in 2009 by the UK's Public Accounts Committee. Many flowering food crops in the UK rely on honeybees for this service. For example, apple, pear, field beans, runner and dwarf beans. Broad beans. What, what kind of beans? I've never heard dwarf beans or broad beans or field beans. <laughs> anyway, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, and oil seed rape. You heard. With 39 commercial crops reliant on bees in total. Even if a crop is not directly pollinated by a honeybee, the crop still benefits indirectly from being an, in an environment in which honeybees are working due to the increased biodiversity in the area which stimulates the crop. Wow. That's great. The bees are making everything the way that it that it is. The only way, reason that so many different types of crops can grow in the areas that we, we have agriculture in the world is because the bees are cross-pollinated dropping that pollen. The bumblebee is also used commercially in the UK as a pollinator of food crops, in particular for tomatoes and soft fruit such as strawberries. We're also growing a tomatoes. Due to their size, shape, and ability to vibrate vigorously, they are more effective at pollinating certain crops. In the UK, we have 25 native species of bumblebee. This may seem like a healthy number, but unfortunately, three species are already extinct, two are critically endangered, and many more are seriously declining in numbers. So that, I believe, is the end of this article. Um, so now I want to see. Do, 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 do. OK, let me actually Google this. Um, are bees endangered? They're not, they're not extinct. Hey, we're doing OK. <laughs> uh, they live for 122 to 152 days. Why are bees Becoming endangered. This is from departments.washington.edu. This looks like it's an old article. Like very old. Uh, 2007. Okay. <coughs> they are becoming extinct? <laughs> there is no specific reason as to why the honeybees are becoming extinct, just as there are many reasons why things do not work properly. There are three main reasons for the bee's extinction, and they are parasites, habitat loss, and cell phones. There are problems in life, and there are problems with the bees as well. In this section, we will discuss the reasons as to why these salient bees are becoming extinct. All right, I'm going to go ahead and find a different article than this one, uh, <laughs> because that seemed um, kind of dumb. Earth.com, Earthpedia, are bees endangered? This is from March of 2019. Um, written by admin or an earth.com staff writer. Du -du 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 -du. There are almost 20,000 different species of bees, many of which provide essential services to humans and ecosystems. In the United States alone, there are around 3,500 species. I know what a bee is. Here we go. In recent years, bee populations have been declining globally. Increased rates of colony collapse disorder, climate change, and other factors have contributed to these changes. These changes have sparked fear that bees may go extinct, leaving us without essential pollination services. As a result, researchers are ex even exploring creating robotic replacements for bees. That's what I'm talking about. Robo-bees, baby. I don't know why <laughs> that excites me. I just get excited by technology, I suppose. But... Um, Thinking about somebody making, you know, 10 million things this size uh, that fly about just in the air uh, doing stuff is weird, you know. But I guess whoever created bees is weird, too. I'm watching you, God. I'm watching you. In recent years, bee populations have been declining globally. Increased rates of colony. Oh, I already read that. The American Fish and Wildlife Service has recognized the severe decline in some threatened wild bee populations. In 2016, seven species of Hawaiian yellow-faced bees were placed on the endangered species list. In 2017, the rusty patch bumblebee, or Bombus affinis, <laughs> was designated as an endangered species. This is the first bumblebee species to receive this classification. This provides these species some protection under the Endangered Species Act. 
In addition, the International Union for Conservation of Nature lists 16 species of bees as vulnerable, 18 as endangered, and 9 as critically endangered globally. However, these endangered species include American native bees species that are not on the endangered species list. Okay? Groups in California are pushing to protect these species. I see. And then why do bees matter? Let's read this as well. The great diversity among species of bees means that there is great risk of losing species before we understand them. Many bee species have developed extremely complex and intricate relationships with plant species. These relationships provide pollination for plants that could otherwise never reproduce. With the loss of bees comes the loss of many plants. The loss of the plants. The diversity and evolution of insects likely portrayed a major role in the evolution of flowering plants. We could lose this diversity that has developed over hundreds of millions of years in just decades. Humans rely upon bees to pollinate our food, as well as many, the many flowering plants we grow for all sorts of uses. In the wild, ble bees play an essential role in keeping our natural lands healthy. <gasps> I just had a horrible thought. If the bees are gone, what happens to all the weed? <laughs> are they pollinating the... Okay, never mind. <clears throat> um... The western honeybee is the most important pollinator for agriculture. These bees are cultivated on every continent except Antarctica. These, this species plays a huge role in the food supply. As a result, they are domesticated and bred at a large scale. This is where you see bee keepers, I think. And they also collect the honey and stuff like that. In recent years, colony collapse disorder has risen for unknown reasons, harming many api apiarists and farmists. Farmers. Farm farmists. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be lonely at farmistonly.com. Though honeybee populations have experienced substantial changes over the last few decades, they are not endangered. Okay, cool. So I, I was under the impression that, that the bee was on its way out. It's almost done. You know, we, we got t two years left on bees. But it seems like it's just starting to, to go in that direction and that a few species are... Um, endangered, like one or two has become extinct, and then several are, are, are on their way to becoming endangered. So people are putting, on, uh, putting us on notice now. They're like, hey, we got to treat the bees better. So let's see what's killing them. Are pesticides killing bees? One of the most likely culprits harming bee colonies is a common insecticide used on crops. <sighs> Neon Nicotinoids are synthetic compounds derived from nicotine, a natural insecticide. These chemicals are often sprayed on seeds to prevent insects from eating them before they begin to grow. Studies have shown that these compounds may affect bees at extremely low concentrations. Additionally, these insecticides, insecticides are neurotoxin to bees, neurotoxic to bees, and cause harm to colonies even in non-deadly doses. Okay. So nicotine will kill bees, but smoke just kind of lays bees out. Interesting, interesting. Two, two sides of the coin there. Um, the loss of bees is not enough to fully explain changes in pollination. Decreasing bee diversity due to habitat fragmentation from agriculture may play a role. In addition, many pesticides have non-lethal effects on bee behavior. This may cause bees to pollinate less effectively and has the potential to change how our forests and grasslands are pollinated. So because we, as humans, keep putting these bees in their own little separate things, the beekeepers and the, the, the farmers and the, you know, the, the honey guys, everybody's kind of spacing the bees apart, they're not able to diversify within themselves and that is also affecting how they pollinate. That's wild. That's wild. So do we have to, like, release our control on the bees? Or maybe just incorporate diversification into um, bee stuff? All right, black bees. Come on, black bees. You can hang out with these other bees. It's all right, black bees. Um, climate change and bees. Black bees, now you can bury any kind of bee that you want to marry. It's all good. You can impregnate any queen uh, that you want. <coughs> um, oh, my God. Speaking of queens, I haven't talked about uh, the queen bee herself, Beyonce and the Bayhive. How is Beyonce a bee? You know, let's 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 Google that. 
his fiance, A B. Let's see. Inside of the Bay Hive. Sign up for the Bay Hive. So Beyonce is the Queen B. And I'm a male drone. You know. How come I'm not Blue Ivy's father? Anyway, anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's get away from that. Um, okay, so bees are in trouble, but they're not as in trouble as I thought they were. Um, it's a little bit pesticides. It's also a little bit um, segregation, apparently, for, for the bees. So now let's look into some cool stuff about bees. Um, I want to see exactly how the stinger affects people and other stuff. <coughs> A bee sting is a wound caused by the stinger from a bee being injected into one's flesh. The stings of most of these species can be quite painful and are therefore keenly avoided by many people. Bee stings differ from insect bites, and the venom or toxin of stinging insects is quite different. Therefore, the body's reaction to a bee sting may differ significantly from one species to another. Oh. In particular, bee stings are acidic whereas wasp stings are alkaline. So the body's reaction to a bee sting may be very different from its reaction to a wasp sting. Okay, that's very interesting. Look at this guy. Ay ay ay. This is really long. Like, I know this is a very small picture, but that that looks like it's getting through a couple of layers of my epidermis, you know? Um, <clears throat> although for most people, a bee sting is painful, but otherwise relatively harmless. In people with insect sting allergy, stings may trigger a dangerous anaphylactic re reaction that is potentially deadly. Additionally, honeybee stings release pheromones that prompt other nearby bees to attack. Oh, snap. That's some, uh, like, Winnie the Pooh stuff. You know, he's out there. He's digging in the hive. He's trying to get honey. And one bee sees him. And then the other bees all come up. They're like, oh, we got your back, son. And then they all, <laughs> they all go to sting uh, Winnie the Pooh. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, let's see. Honeybee stings. A honeybee that is away from the hive foraging for nectar or pollen will rarely sting, except when stepped on or roughly handled. Honeybees will actively seek out and sting when they perceive the hive to be threatened often being alerted to this by the release of attack pheromones. Okay, so if they're out, they're just doing their job, you're seeing them hanging out in flowers, they're probably not just going to come up and straight sting you. But if there's a hive in your tree and you're hanging out underneath your tree and they perceive you to be a threat, which your big ass because you are, uh, then that's when they start getting into sting mode. Okay, that's cool. Although it is widely believed that a worker honeybee can sting only once, this is a partial misconception. Although the stinger is in fact barbed so that it lodges in the victim's skin, tearing loose from the bee's abdomen and leading to its death in minutes, this only happens if the skin of the victim is sufficiently thick, such as a mammal's, which is you. Uh, honeybees are the only hymenoptera with a strongly barbed sting, though yellow jackets and some other wasps have small barbs. Okay. Oh, look at these. There's some, some pics. Ay, ay, ay. He's right in there. Who took these pictures? Oh, and that's like part of his abdomen that rips off. This is the top of this, uh, this thing here. And then that's the sting itself after 27 minutes after. And after a day, it's all nice and big and red and splotchy. Um, treatment. Let's look at this. So if you get stung by a bee. <clears throat> the first step in treatment following a honeybee sting is removal of the stinger itself. The stinger should be removed as quickly as possible without regard to method. A study has shown the amount of venom delivered does not differ when the sting is pinched or scraped off, and even the delay of a few seconds leads to more venom being ejected. Once the stinger is removed, pain and swelling should be reduced with a cold compress. A topical anesthetic containing benzocaine will kill pain quickly, and menthol is an effective anti-itch treatment. Itching can be also be relieved by antihistamine or by a steroid cream. So if you're getting stung out there, uh, there's a couple things you can use. Uh, ice and friggin' uh, benzocaine. Okay. Cool beans. So now um, let's jump over into... Oh, well, well I can show you some, some pretty bad bee stings real quick just for, just for fun. Okay, so we see this, this guy... Goodness gracious, that's awful. Look at this, mother. Are you insane? For real? Yikes. Is this really a bee sting? It says these lips may look like Botox and lip fillers gone terribly wrong, but 
This is from the sun.co.uk. They're actually extreme reactions to bee stings. Ay, ay, ay. This was written in August of 2018 by Sophia Petkar. Um, is there more? Oh, no. <laughs> Your poor lip. <laughs> ah. Um, some of these people ended up with rather enviable pouts, while others ended up looking like Botox gone very wrong. Oh, this woman's downward turned lower lip goes perfectly with her frown. And then this one, this woman's upper lip is now twice the size of her whole mouth before this thing. Oh, why are these people all getting bit on the mouth or stung in the mouth? Yikes. The hat is shielding his eyes while his upper lip is keeping his chin in the shade. Man, somebody was having so much fun writing this article. Um, ay, ay, ay. Oh, no. Oh, lordy. Hot diggity dog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this fool kind of look like me. <laughs> nah, I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh Lord. Okay. All right. All right. I think I'm done. I think I'm done looking at looking at lip these lips. But I also did bring up um dogs who got stung by bees cuz uh this is very funny to me. <laughs> and apparently it's like much more dangerous for dogs to be stung by bees than people, but oh, it's so much cuter. Look at these. <laughs> uh oh, he's just dressed as a bee. Get out of here. Get out of here. Show me these big fat lips, okay? Show me <laughs> the big old noses. Ah, uh, did you guys come here to listen to a podcast? I'm just looking at pictures of dogs. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's stop. Let's stop with all of that, okay? Um, now I want to look at um, where? Oh, how bees make honey. Yes, of course. This is from buzzaboutbees.net. So I love honey. Uh, honey is one of my favorite sweeteners. I use it in tea almost every day. I actually uh, am running out. I need to go buy some more. And um, I love honey. Uh, I've heard that it never goes bad and that um, it's technically just like bee spit, but it tastes wonderful. You know, if there's other kinds of spit out there that tastes as good as honey, I'm down to try. You know, I'm into it. Let's go. Put it in my mouth. Um, <clears throat> how do bees make honey? This was updated on February 19th of 2020. Honey is not only tasty, it is the only food made by an insect that is eaten by both humans and the insect itself. Of course, other creatures like to eat honey too, including other invertebrates, mammals, and birds. Bears? Maybe? I, I, I bet bears like to like lick honey, but I doubt there are any addicts like Winnie the Pooh. Um, the method by which bees make honey has been a subject of fascination for hundreds of years. Even the royal beekeeper to King Charles II of England in 1630 to 1685 noted that a bee is an exquisite chemist. Hmm. Um, before we go into detail, let's consider these amazing facts and figures. To produce a pound of honey, foraging bee honeybees have to fly a whopping 55,000 miles. What? That's a lot of honeybees working very hard because each honeybee will only produce around one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey in its life. One a teaspoon, not that I could. A teaspoon is pretty small, and one twelfth of a tea. Why am I doing it like this? Jesus Christ! Stop! Stop! Get out! Get your finger out of there. Um, one twelfth of a teaspoon <laughs> per bee. Okay, and. I'm planning on ordering like a, I don't know, like a 16 ounce <laughs> thing of of honey when I next go to the store or whatever. So that's that's a lot. Um, that's a lot that it has to produce. Oh, and that's despite the fact that a foraging honeybee visits up to 100 flowers per foraging trip. So no wonder it takes about 556 foraging bees to visit 2 million flowers just to make a pound of honey. Wow. So it is well known that honey is made by a colony of honeybees living in a nest or a hive if kept by a beekeeper. A typical beehive will house about 60,000 bees, most of them workers, industriously making honey and the honeycombs in which the honey is stored. The process of making honey starts with foraging worker honeybees and flowers, of course, the male honeybees, the drones, the bangers, the... <laughs> 
<laughs> pollinators. Um, the male honeybees do not forage for the hive, and nor does the queen honeybee. Okay, as the weather begins to warm up, the bees will begin foraging on flowers. Bees have to work very hard to make honey, with endless trips to flowers to collect nectar. So they're going, they're sucking up nectar, and they're bringing it back to the hive. They will usually collect the sweet nectar from flowers within a radius of around four miles, and this nectar will then be taken to the hive. The bees have glands which secrete an enzyme known as the bee enzyme. When the bees collect the nectar, it is then mixed with the enzyme in the bee's mouth. So it is a bee spit. <laughs> you guys like spitting sounds? Jesus Christ. Why do I... Why? You guys aren't listening to this. Uh, back at the beehive or nest, the nectar is passed from one bee to another, further mixing the nectar with the bee enzyme and turning the nectar into honey. This is then dropped into wax cells called honeycomb. These are hexagonal shaped cells the bees make out of beeswax, and they act just like storage jars but made of wax. So wait, where does the beeswax come from? Is that coming out of their butts or what? Let's just look at beeswax real quick. How do bees make wax? Uh, the wax is secreted from glands on the underside of the abdomen. Most of the wax is produced by young worker bees. All workers are female. The glands that secrete the wax will reduce in size as the bee grows and matures and eventually takes on foraging duties. After young bees have secreted wax from their abdomens, the other worker bees then gather it up and get it ready for use. Okay, so it's just, it's just uh, lady bee jizz. I gotcha, I gotcha. That's cool. Right, let's go back. <clears throat> Initially, the honey stored in the cells is still a bit wet, so the bees fan their wings over it, which helps the water to evaporate. After some time, the water content is reduced to around 17%. You know, they're just chilling. They're just flapping it. They're like, hey, get sticky, get sticky. Um, once the honey is ready, at this point, the bees will cap the cells, which means adding a layer of wax over the hexagonal-shaped honeycomb cells, a little bit like putting a lid on a jar. Uh, when bees are kept in hives, this is when the beekeepers know the honey is ready to be harvested. The bees do everything, okay? They build the little storage containers, they put the honey in, they mix it up, they cool it, and then they put lids on, and they're like, hey, human dude, you want to come uh, take this and sell it for a bunch of money? And he's like, yes, yes, absolutely. Beekeepers will then move in to rob the hives. So in answer to the question about how bees make honey, the answer lies in much hard work from honeybees, especially during spring and summer. Honeybee workers born and active during this time will live for around six or seven weeks, whereas those born in autumn may live four to six months. Hmm. Learn more about the honeybee life cycle. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, so in the winter... The colony will need to continue feeding around 20,000 workers and a queen. However, the answer is that honeybees do not go foraging in winter when the weather is very poor and there are a few flowers. Instead, the honey is their winter food. So they go out all spring and summer. They're pollinating. They're making honey. They're living it up. And then winter comes and the flowers are, you know, are dead or, or gone. And so they just crack open them big old jars and they just <laughs> they suck their spit right on back up into their bodies and that sustains them through the winter cool it's a cool it's a cool system you know they're 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 a very sophisticated society that they make their hive they they make their honey they 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 are like ants i, I think i read that somewhere that they were part of like the same the same family and it's cool to see animals do stuff that we do you know because it makes me feel a little bit less of an asshole you know, for participating in the society that has completely commandeered the earth. Because um, bees, you know, they can kind of do it. They take over trees, take over this tree, take over that tree, they'll take over your backyard, uh, they'll take over all kinds of stuff. Okay, so I think the last thing I'm going to look at <coughs> on the episode is, uh, and I don't, I thought I had brought it up, but I guess I didn't, is bees versus wasps. I kind of want to know the differences between these two um creatures because i actually have wasps in my backyard as well i think one of my neighbors has like a hive in there in in their roof or whatever and so some of the wasps they come out and then hang out in my in my backyard yo my freaking <sighs> echo is going off 
So this is from Orkin.com, or Orkin, the, the pest control company. Um, the differences between honeybees and wasps. Wasps and honeybees can be mistaken for one another because both insects are capable of giving painful stings. While honeybees can attack when provoked, wasps are naturally and more aggressive predators. Identifying the difference between honeybees and wasps is important in order to administer proper treatment of wounds and appropriate pest control. Wasps and honeybees are both members of the Hymenoptera order of insects. However, their physical bodies are different. Honeybees measure around 2.54 centimeters long. Some have entirely black bodies, while others are black or brown with orange or yellow striations. Honeybees are hairy, while wasps usually have smooth and shiny skin. Wasps are narrow-waisted and have four wings and may be brightly colored with black and yellow patterns. Wasps and bees also differ in lifestyle and habits. Honeybee colonies can have populations over 75,000, while wasp colonies tend to have fewer than 10,000 individuals. Queen wasps build a nest for their colony, while worker honeybees create and maintain hives. Unlike most wasps that hibernate during the winter season and build a new nest the following autumn, honeybees do not hibernate as they live on food reserves and heat accumulated by thousands of workers. Wasp species cannot produce honey, but all species of honeybees are capable of producing and storing sizable amounts of honey within their hives. While honeybees can sting only once and die after attacking, a single wasp is capable of stinging multiple times. Interesting, interesting. Now, they're they're very similar. Do wasps um, pollinate? Goodness, do wasps pollinate flowers? This is from buzzaboutbees.net again. Okay, I should have just stayed here. Do wasps pollinate flowers? Quite simply, yes. And I will share with you some research to prove it. For many, wasps are seen as a threat and even a nuisance, but they perform vital roles in the ecosystem. As a natural form of pest control, they are a brilliant gardener's friend, taking crop-eating insects to feed their young. Increasingly, however, with the spotlight on pollinators generally, people are, becoming, are beginning to ask the question, are wasps pollinators? That is a good question. Now, the hairs can be clearly seen on this beautiful wasp. Now, I just read on Orkin that wasps had smooth, shiny skin and weren't hairy. But this does look more like a wasp than a bee. Personally, I decided to investigate the subject of wasp pollination some years ago. I had read false information on a pest control website uh -ho, that wasps do not pollinate. The reason given was that wasps do not have hairy bodies that would collect and enable pollen grains to be transferred from one flower to another. In short, the whole article appeared to the query the value and purpose of wasps, what's the point of wasps, seemed to be the whole approach. However, the notion that wasps do not have hairy bodies is actually false. Even the common wasp and German wasp are often target of pest control companies do indeed have hairy bodies. Okay, so the pest, I'm glad I read uh, this one after the pest control one. Like pest control um, websites, they're getting you to think that the wasps, which they are aggressive and they will sting you, but they're making this seem like they don't have any purpose so you don't feel as bad about um, calling them up to come destroy them all in, in your backyard or whatever. Very interesting. Pest control propaganda. The first time I really examined the hair on a wasp was when I found a dead wasp on a windowsill of a room that is only rarely used. The body of a wasp had a fine covering of dust which stuck to the hairs, making the hairs themselves more visible. Yeah, I mean, I'm seeing the hairs. Indeed, the hair on the yellow and black striped abdomen of many wasps is so fine it is almost invisible to the naked eye. And how many people are happy to get too close to a wasp when it is alive? Not many people. After all, who likes wasps? Not me. Now, I will say that wasps hang out in my backyard all the time. I also hang out there a fair amount. And I've never been stung. Uh, they've never come super close to... to you know, get in my face, seeming like they were going to aggressively attack me or anything like that. They mostly just hang out in the bird bath that we have out there, and uh, and they they go in amongst the, the flowers in the garden. So I think I'm cool with them. You know, they're not bothering me too much, and their hive isn't in my house. It's in my neighbor's house. So I'm, I'm chill. I'm chill with the wasps. Um, but I know that in the news recently – you know, not not too long ago, um, I heard about some kind of brand new murder wasps. Oh, or were they hornets? Murder wasps, California. Let's see. 
<clears throat> an article from ABC 10. Murder hornets can pose threat to California agriculture. So let's just read this because this is uh, right where I live. I live in the heart of agriculture country in the middle of California. And, uh, you know, we need that stuff to keep our communities alive and whatnot. Recently discovered in the U.S., murder hornets could pose threat to California agriculture, but unlikely. Okay. That was an oddly worded sentence. Um, Dr. Lynn Kimsey, etymologist at UC Davis, said the insect got its frightening name because they kill honeybees by decapitating them, <laughs> among other reasons. Written by Kurt Rivera on May 5th, 2020. <coughs> in Stockton. Shout out. 209. It looks menacing, is two inches long, and its sting can be deadly to humans. More importantly, it enjoys feasting on honeybees, a species that helps California crops but has seen a sharp decline in recent years. Meet the giant hornet, or as the internet has recently learned, the murder hornet. Dr. Lynn Kimsey, etymologist at UC Davis, said the insect got its frightening name because they kill honeybees by decapitating them. They also attack in groups, exposing victims to toxic venom that is as that is as that can be fatal in abundance. Bro, this was updated. You didn't you didn't catch that sentence? That was a bad sentence. Dr. Kimsey says it first appeared in Washington State near Vancouver last September, most likely arriving on a shipping container from Asia. None have been discovered in California. Oh, okay. They haven't been discovered here? Still, there could be cause for concern, because honeybees are essential to pollinating the fruits and vegetables that are key to California's economy. If it did come over to the point where we couldn't control it, then yes, it could do a lot of damage to agricultural in general. Agriculture in general. Why am I editing this article? I hate it when I read when I read something and I have to correct it after it's well after it's been published. Come on. Get your shit together, ABC ten. On farmland near French camp. A beekeeper named Peter, who preferred not to give his last name, has close to 250 hives. He is familiar with the giant insect, but isn't worried about attacks on hives for now. I don't think they're going to be adapting that quickly here in the United States, Peter said. Still, the San Joaquin Farm Bureau Federation is keeping a close eye on the giant insect's next move. If this is something that gets established, it can wipe out hives, says Farm Bureau Federation Ex Executive Director Bruce Blodgett. <laughs> Just a couple of them can wipe out hives in no time at all. So what are the chances the murder hornet could establish colonies in the Sacramento and San Joaquin Valley? Very little, because we do a lot of spraying, Kibsey said. The insect population is very small by and large. There just wouldn't be enough food for them. Okay, she says nesting in the ground would also be difficult because the ground is tilled. As for trees, their size makes them easy to be discovered and then taken out. Bottom line, the murder hornet is more sting than bite for now. I've been Kurt Rivera with ABC 10 News. All right, so, I mean, basically they they're, they didn't end up being a problem, like, at all. But but they got the name Murder Hornet, so that, uh, that made them scary. Now, let me just look up one more thing. Murder Hornet, Sting. I just kind of want to see what this can do to a human, you know? Um, this is from NationalGeographic.com. Why are murder hornet stings so intense? Asian giant hornets, two of which have been seen in the U.S., have relatively toxic venom, which can cause great pain and, rarely, death. The sensation of being stung is like, oh, no. Oh, no. Creating a free Nat Geo account to continue reading. Come on, Nat Geo. Y'all can't just let me look at all the gajillion ads you got on this website? All right. Let's see if I can find another article. Oh, from Newsweek. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. What happens when a murder hornet stings you? Goodness gracious. News articles, or news websites, they're just relentless. Look at how many ads are on this. Shit. All right. <coughs> Asian giant hornets, the largest wasp in the world, were first confirmed to be in the United States in December 2019 when hornets were sighted and a dead hornet found in the border city of Blaine, Washington, several months after a nest was destroyed across the Strait of Georgia on Vancouver Island in Canada. Um, I kind of just want to know what this thing. Let's go, let's go, let's go. While primarily a danger to bee populations and honey production, one hornet can kill up to 40 bees per minute with its powerful bite, while a swarm of hornets can wipe out a honeybee colony entirely in a few hours. The Asian giant hornet also poses a danger to humans, which has earned its nickname the murder hornet. 40 bees per minute. 
40 bees per minute. It can kill for. I don't even know if I can kill 40 bees per minute. What the fuck? I'm, I'm imagining it like it's an action movie. And the murder hornet has like two big blades. And he's just like. It's fucking sick in my head. Um, when it comes to the sting of a murder hornet, few people have as much direct experiential data as YouTube personality Nathaniel Coyote Peterson who submits himself to painful insect bites and stings on his channel, Brave Wilderness. Uh, go check that out. In 2018, Peterson allowed himself to be stung by a Japanese hornet, which is the largest subspecies of the Asian giant hornet. Look at this image. Holy moly. I don't really want to play the video because um, I don't want to get like claimed or striked or anything like that. Um... But maybe I'll just cover that. I don't know. Let's just let's just check it out because that oh, it's 18 minutes long. Oh boy, these bees are big. I guess that's why you know what I mean? The giant hornet. I guess that's why Man, okay, well. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I'm done. I'm out. I don't want to look at this no more. Oh, he's on the ground. Ay ay ay. Oh, okay. Go watch. Go watch the rest of his video to see that. Um. That was that was that was a big. <laughs> it's so big. Um, stung under controlled conditions with an epinephrine injector on hand in case his body responded by going into anaphylactic shock. Peterson used entomologist forceps to press the hornet against his forearm until it injected him with venom from its quarter-inch long stinger. Though doubled over in pain, Peterson did his best to describe the sensation of getting stung by the so-called murder hornet. After an initial wave of dizziness, the first sensation which Peterson gasps out shortly after the Asian giant hornet stung his forearm is searing pain! Absolute searing pain! My hand is completely seized up and locked in place, Peterson said about 45 seconds after the initial sting. 20 minutes later and the swelling had expanded considerably, while Peterson described the subsequent hours as some of the most painful I have ever faced. Yikes! He did a follow-up video where he described almost 36 hours of pain, which transitioned from searing to itching overnight, even after treating with ice packs and antihistamine. He stung himself once with this thing, and his whole arm is messed up. <sighs> White people are crazy. All right, all right. So that's murder hornets. That's wasps. That's bees. I feel like I learned a lot today. This was very informative. Um... And now I know that uh, bees get stolen from and that they do a lot of good work um, out in the fields uh, for our crops and our agriculture and that uh, they are kind of declining in numbers, kind of due to us, kind of due to us again. Yeah, it's mostly it's mostly us. Also, these uh, giant uh, killer murder hornets, they're they're not very helpful either. But it doesn't seem like within my lifetime necessarily that bees would be extinct or that we wouldn't do more to keep them alive and well <coughs> in our ecosystems because they are so important. The environmentalists will take care of that, you know, but you know, don't, don't be, don't kill every bee you see. They're, 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 they're just doing their jobs, you know, let them, let them be. All right, you guys, uh, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Andre knows everything. This is episode seven. I don't know if I, said that at the top um uh subscribe like share uh comment let me know what you think of bees if you learned anything new in this if if i failed to learn anything about bees that you wanted to know or that you looked up uh let me know in the comments i i, I want to i want to read those things and um yeah that's it follow me i'm at andre morton jr on social media um my link tree is in the description go click everywhere i'm on facebook and instagram and twitter all them places uh you can subscribe to this podcast on youtube and on podcast uh services so Pocket Cast, apple podcast spotify I'm, I'm all over the place uh get me wherever you want um i think that's been it for this episode i am andre morton and i learned more today i know more today than i knew yesterday thanks bye <laughs>